The emitter follower is a very interesting kind of amplifier. But uh, before we go into examining this, we'd like to introduce uh, a new parameter, a new hybrid parameter. You'll remember that uh, we've already identified a parameter called HFE. H small FE. And this is the same as the AC beta. And it is simply defined as the collector current, the AC collector current, divided by the AC base current. Uh, another parameter which often appears on the data sheets is an H little f little c. And this is the emitter current divided by the base current. And so these are interesting to notice that HFE is the ratio of the collector, C, collector current divided by the base current, whereas HFC is the emitter current, E, divided by the base current. So the first thing we want to do is we want to redraw this circuit as the AC equivalent. And of course, remember what happens when we do that. We automatically short circuit all the capacitors. So this becomes a short, this becomes a short. And then the supply voltage also goes to zero. So that essentially becomes a short as well. And um, now we rearrange the circuit elements to uh, make some sort of sense. And uh, oh yes, uh, we also have to include the AC impedance, which is intrinsically found within the base emitter junction, which is RE prime. So we're just going to redraw the circuit. And what we end up with is uh, a source. And that's going to give us an input current, I in. And that's in going into R1 which is in parallel with R2. And that goes into the base of the transistor. So we're just going to label this as Z base. And inside that, of course, is RE prime. And in the emitter circuit, there is the emitter resistor RE Notice this resistor in this case is not bypassed. Now that's a parallel with RL. The load resistance. Now uh, these resistances, both in the input over here and in the output, can be grouped together. This group of resistors here, three resistors, R1, R2, and Z base, are all in parallel and we're going to combine them as Z in. Z in is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with Z in the base. And likewise we're going to combine the output impedances which is right here and uh, that will be R, little r, big E to minus its AC and that is a, a grouping of resistors in the output is simply equal to RE in parallel with RL. So now we want to try and discover what the relationship is between the input voltages, which is right here, V in, V out, I in, and I out. What are the relationships? Because we're going to try and derive the gain. Well, the easiest one to find is V in. So we'll just focus right in here because V in goes right into the base and V out comes right out at the emitter. So let's just redraw this little part of the circuit to zoom in and see how that works. Well, we essentially have V in, V in, Going into the base, which has an intrinsic impedance RE prime, and at the output of the emitter, it has it's eight this impedance, 
little r, big E. And this node over here is V out. And so as you can see, what we have over here is simply a little voltage divider. That's all this is. So we can immediately find a relationship between V in and V out. V out is equal to V in times the voltage divider rule, the combined resistances in the AC resistances in the emitter, RE, divided by uh, RE plus RE prime. And uh, since RE prime is uh, much, much less than the combined emitter resistors, RE, we can write V out is approximately equal to the RE e prime disappears, and we're left with this ratio over here, which is just simply 1. So we're left with the equation that the output is approximately equal to the input. Another way of stating this is that the voltage gain is approximately equal to 1. It'll be slightly less than 1 because of the loss here in RE prime. So that's the first thing to notice is that this circuit has a voltage gain of 1. Now to try and find the current gain, we take a look at the base circuit over here. And of course we have the input current which divides itself, it goes into R1, some of it, some of it goes into R2, and some of it goes into Z base. So we want to find out how much current goes into the base. And of course we apply the current divider rule, I base is equal to the current going in, I in, times the total impedance that the current is being divided among, which is right here, Z in, divided by the branch that we're interested in, Z base. So that's how much current is going to the base. Now, we're interested in finding I in because we want to find the current gain of the circuit. So therefore we can say, rearranging the circuit, I in is equal to I base times Z base over Z in. So there's our input current, the current that goes into the circuit. Now, if we look at the output current, which is right over here, I out, we also see that uh, there is a, a current dividing action from the current coming from the emitter. Some of it goes through RE and some of it goes through RL. So I out is equal to whatever is coming from the emitter, IE, times the parallel impedance, the impedance that the emitter sees here, which is R E, there it is, divided by the branch that we're interested in, which is R L. And so now we have an equation which says this is I in, this is I out, and we can now find the gain. Therefore, I out over I in is equal to I E times Z, uh, R E divided by R L and the whole thing divided by I base times Z base over Z in. Now of course you recognize, hopefully, this relationship right here, I E divided by I B. That happens to be the hybrid parameter HFC, which is found on many data sheets. This is simply HFC. And this represents the current gain. So now we can write the current gain, AI, is equal to HFC, which we get from the data sheets, times RE over RE, RL, rather times 
And this uh, comes to the numerator, it flips upside down. Z in divided by Z base. So here is the equation for the current gain. Now notice that the voltage gain is 1, but the current gain is actually uh, can be quite high. And then, of course, the power gain is simply the product of both the current gain and the voltage gain. So the gain power is equal to AV times AI. And since AV, the voltage gain, is equal to 1, that means that the power gain is approximately equal to the current gain. So what does this tell us that this circuit is? It tells us that the voltage gain is one, which is why it's called an emitter follower. An emitter follower. That's to say that this output does this, whatever the input voltage does, they're identical. But that the circuit is in fact a current amplifier. Now, where would we use such a device? Where do we want to keep the voltage uh, the constant, but the current to change? Well. It's when we have a low impedance in the, the load. So for example, if this load was a speaker, like in a stereo set or a headset, then uh, this circuit would work just fine. We put in a voltage and it would translate that voltage to a much larger current, which would drive low impedance load. So in fact, this is a very common circuit found in any application where you want to drive a low impedance load.